One of the first problems that, that I, we've talked about in this class is the idea of scheduling. I'm not going to repeat that problem. It's a, it's a big one. But the next one is, what is learning and how do you capture it? The whole idea of lecture notes rewrites is to try to capture a very, very complex process called learning in a written document. You know, I, we could actually just look at this physically. It's, um, one of the things that is really interesting to me that I notice every single quarter is most of my students, when they take lecture notes, the only thing that they're writing down is the stuff that I write down. And the only thing that they write down is literally like the bare minimum of either the words that I said out loud or the physical symbols that I wrote on the page. And I think the reason that we do this, I used to do that all the time, like whatever I wrote on the page was what the teacher wrote and I wrote nothing more. Because the idea is somehow I have to capture it, right? But let me ask you this, how many of you in this class have been sitting in this lecture and realized the way that Jeff thinks about stuff is not the way that makes sense to me? Yeah, and that's really normal. Learning the whole, po like, one of the things that I want to get to in my, in my career as an educator is that every student in my class has a different experience in my class, and that experience is based on your unique lived background and then the way that you think about the material structured within your own neural networks. But in order to do that, can you guess who has to drive that learning experience for each bit of content in the class? Yeah. This is one of the reasons I want to solve the problem of content delivery not live in class. The moment I lecture, do you know what I force? I, I, I kill curiosity and I force the, the ability not to reflect. I literally force you all to follow my speed in my words in my handwriting live in class, which basically requires asynchronous learning. The moment that anybody sits up here and for two hours delivers technical content in a live stream of thought action, by definition, in my opinion, learning is not happening at that moment. Now, there are some folks that can do some pretty deep reflections live in class, but I would even claim those folks have systems by which when they leave this classroom, they reinvigor or reincarnate that knowledge from ground up. Because learning requires that. One of the things that I found really useful, especially as I got higher in my education when stuff got really hard, was to capture that information in my own systems, in my own words, far beyond what the teacher was saying and writing. And I call that here a lecture note rewrite system. So here are some examples of the last class that I took. These are my rewritten lecture notes. Um, this was an engineering class that I took at UC Davis. Um, my goal in a class was always, if I could, I like to try to challenge myself to be the best student in the class, not because I cared about being the best student, but because if I did that, it would set a certain number of things that would need to get done that I would have to hold myself to because I held that goal. This one out of 100, there were three that were better than me. They got higher grades. I remember talking to the guy after that. Um, I think those three had uh, engineering degrees at, from um, IIT in India. I remember meeting those guys and they were quite advanced and so, so be it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show was um, I can guarantee you that when, if we look at these lecture notes, the teacher definitely did not write all this stuff on the board. And when I took my first drafts, the, the first drafts did not have this much information in it. Could, do you think I would have been able to do this diagram live during an in-class presentation? Why not? Time yeah. Uh, yeah, and in a live in-class presentation, I'm not very good at drawing. Right? And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm like making connections between, like I'm actually labeling the variables. I can guarantee you he didn't do that. One of my favorite things to do in, in these type of lecture notes, uh, you can't read this, it says, what does this mean? That's not a very great question, but it's associated with these, uh, L related to N squared, L related to mu. Check that out. He also did not do this. He did not, when, when he was doing diagrams, he would audible a bunch of information about the diagram and not write down a single thing. And his diagrams were super sloppy. Do you know why they were super sloppy? Because he had 50 minutes to deliver three hours of content. So he would just go and then he would draw a diagram and he'd be like, this is this, this is this, this is this, this is this, boom, on to the next one. 
when I was rewriting my lecture notes, one of the challenges that I had is I really wanted to capture that information in a way that made sense in my language so that any time I went back and looked at it, the primary document that I would use is my lecture notes, not the textbook, not the first draft of the lecture notes, not the teacher's handouts that he put online. The first thing I wanted to look at was my own lecture notes. And then I always like to do, I call this the two minute rule. Um, have you ever been in a class and they're, they're working through the steps and you're, you're like, oh, step one to two, I'm good. Step two to three, I'm good. But step three to four, I have no clue how they did that. But once I get step three to four, I got four to five, I got five to six. It's just that step three to four. You ever been in that? Anybody ever done the thing where you do what we call deep learning and you're like, I'm not going to touch anything else in this class until I figure out what steps three to four was? What happens the moment you do that? You miss out on five. You miss out of a bunch of content. You usually, I usually didn't even get the answer to step three to four. I would spend three hours working on steps three to four. Wouldn't even get the answer. Missed out on the rest of the content of the class. Now I'm behind in that class and I started to be behind in other classes because I took extra time to do it, right? So I liked, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing a new rule that I actually used myself. I never said it out loud because I didn't have to coach myself in this. The rule is the two minute rule. Number one, I would propose for all of my students, I would propose you get in the habit of rewriting lecture notes. Now, if you're not in the habit of doing this, I would actually still say do it. There's a few reasons why. But as long as you're making sure you understand the content, that's what matters. The rewritten lecture notes in my case are the step-by-step -step process where you're actually not just writing down what the professor writes, but you're creating your, an entire written copy of the concept image associated with that lecture content in your own handwriting with full descriptions, beautiful diagrams, all the information that you need. If in the process of doing that, we could keep going through this. I'd love to get some of the, the t yeah, you see this? Check this out. You know what the orange stuff was? Office hour visits. It was very common for me to get five hours of studying done in 10 minutes with a professor. You know what I mean by that? I would spend five hours rewriting my lecture notes and get all of the questions all written out. And then when I was with the professor, this guy literally would be like five people, he'd be like, go. And then you'd ask the question, then he'd be like, go, ask the question, answer, go, ask the question, answer. And within four or five rounds of that, I could fill out an entire lecture notes just by having them ready. Which meant, like if the two minute rule holds, which is I'm working on steps one to two, two to three, three to four, let's see if there's some, some actual like heavy mathematical, this is pretty heavy. Right? So I'm going one to two, two to three, three to four. Here, three to four, I didn't understand. So I asked myself, how important um, is turns ratio to understand? Oh, okay, so I guess there's a turns ratio. I actually put the page number from the book. There's associated up here, and I wanted to know how important is this to understand. And then I have a memory tool associated with this. The impedance is higher where the voltage is higher. So now when I went into that, that office, that, that particular thing, like how much energy should I put into this, I couldn't answer that by myself. So the two minute rule that I would impose for myself and I would suggest that you think about is if you're working on rewriting your lecture notes and you're structuring all this information and you're really customizing it and then you get stuck, give, our, give yourself two minutes and in that two minutes you can do anything you want to try to answer that question. You can look at the notes, you can look at the book, you can go online, but if that two minutes is up, and you still don't have an answer, then write a very, very well articulated question in full words about the context of the question and exactly what the question is. I like to highlight it. I have a student that just coached me today. She likes to put post-it notes and she said the post-it notes are really nice because then she's not flipping through her notes. She literally just grabs the post-it note, goes right to that question and says, yep, there it is. And then the claim is, once you've done that, once you've gone through the entire lesson and you've done the two minute rule, what ended up happening for me is I would get through everything that I could understand in the time that I allotted and I had partitioned the notes into two sections, two types of content. Can you guess what those were? Stuff that I understood really well and I had a really well written document that led me through every step that I needed and what? all the things that I didn't understand in well-articulated questions with a track record that I could bring to office hours and live in office hours get help to that. The reason, there's two reasons why I like to write really well-articulated questions. I got to a point in my career where I could actually answer my own question by wording it properly. 
at, I mean, seven out of 10 questions, if I just wrote out the whole question, I would usually find, oh, of course that's the answer. Why wasn't I thinking that to begin with? And then the other three questions, as long as I had the entire questions written out and it was super well cont contextualized, one thing that would be really nice is normally if I had a question on Saturday, do you know when the next time I'd see the professor? If I was lucky Monday, but usually like Tuesday or Thursday. Anybody ever have a question that you wrote on Saturday and then didn't even understand the question on mo Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday? If I write the entire context down, all I have to do is read my question. Two, not all professors are friendly. Did I ever tell you about the professor I showed up to his office hour? I knock on the door and he goes, yeah, what? Doesn't even turn around. He goes, yeah, what? And I'm like, oh, I have some questions. And then he goes, yeah, go ahead. And he wouldn't turn around and look me in my eyes until I asked him an interesting question. Did I ever tell you about the professor that looked me in my face and said, you're stupid, you shouldn't even be in this school? In a situation where I'm having to ask questions, technical questions, in a hostile environment, if I haven't written the entire question down in full wording, I'm screwed. Because you know what's gonna happen when, when that person with a lot of power over my life is hostile to me? You know what happens to my emotional energy? A spike. You know what happens if I have a full question written on a document that's well, well written out that follows the lecture and I get nervous, you know what I do? Read this please. <laughs> that's my question. And now all of a sudden, my emotions are gone and all we're talking about is the content, which is what, they, what that hostile person wanted to do anyways, right? Yeah. Um, and then the idea then is now I've translated the problem of understanding the entire lecture into the problem of getting the stuff that I do have, writing really good questions for the stuff that I don't have, and then outsourcing that for an asynchronous conversation that's gonna happen later, in which case I can go to office hours and get those done. And then I would make a priority to visit office hours every quarter. The reason that I say this is most of my students don't, don't look at their own work as publishable. But I'm going to say this, every single one of you can write a textbook. And one of the first places that I would challenge you to do that is in your notes. I would challenge every one of you to make a more valuable resource than the textbook written in the course. Now, of course, you might say, well, how can I make a more valuable resource? This person has had 50 years to work on that, or 20 years, or 10 years. When they wrote that textbook, were they thinking about your learning? Were they thinking about your background? Were they thinking about your experiences? Were they writing it in language that was designed by you? The entire learning resources was written for somebody else. When you're rewriting your lecture notes, my challenge to every single student is, write them in such a way that those become primary documents that you can use for the rest of the course. And to be honest with you, to this day, I am still working in this content. And when I have a question, do you know what source I go back to? I go back to my notes. I have the textbook for this, I have the professor's notes. My notes are more valuable. There's more information in these notes than is available in the textbook and available in the professor's notes. The editors for the textbook, you ever notice this when you're reading a math textbook? There's a bunch of missing steps. You know why they do that? Save money. The editor's like, oh, I don't need to show the students that two plus two is four, and I don't need to show the students that four divided by eight is one half. So why don't I just skip all those steps and we'll do the most important steps to that. But just because the editor made that decision, does that mean that you understand all the steps that are missing? Guess what you can do, or guess what I can do when I rewrite my lecture notes? I can add all the steps in, and I can create, in, from one diagram in the textbook, I might create three or four different diagrams in my notes, highlighting dis different aspects of that. Once, once we can get in that habit, once I got in that habit, what ended up happening in all of my classes is I began to customize my understanding of that material in a, in a track record that I could go back to. And when I think about a test, the reason that this is important, do you know what an exam is in a STEM class? We're actually solving, we're actually doing four different things. We're, we're testing you on your understanding. What else are we testing you on? Yep, I was gonna get to that. We want to see that you can remember. We want to see that you can, and I guess we can do that here, problem solve. You know what else we ask you to do? We ask you to perform. In other words, we ask you to, 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 to do something under time pressure in, in, a, in a encapsulated space. You know what this system does? 
This system does one thing. Do you know what it does? It forces me to spend the time to really understand the material that the teacher said out of their mouth at least once. Now, I have whole other systems I'm not going to talk about today. I used to carry these around with me. These are literally every single technical content here has its own note card. And I, I literally used to go to parties on Friday nights and it was like a 15 minute walk to the party. That's 15 minutes of study. That I wouldn't use these big ones because people would be like, oh my God, what's in that guy's pocket? I would use literally the small ones, right? Because then they would never know that I'm like a freaking nerd, right? There's, there are systems, like each one of these has its own system, but the lecture rewrite is a formal documentation that I can use to guarantee that at least once I've understood every single thing that that person said about the content written on the board. And I have a written document that I can go back to at any point that's customized for my understanding, in my words, with my diagrams, with all the things that I need to learn that content. And it was written in a time where I could deeply reflect on it. Anybody ever notice that that's really hard to do in live lecture? Yeah. Yeah, live lecture is designed so that you can't do that. The reason I say that now is this class is an introduction to that. I would highly encourage you to, to kind of reflect on that process. And of course I will say, do you think the skills that I'm showing you right now are going to be the ones that you should use? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The whole point of this is to have you think about this problem, that live lecture is not a good place to learn. And anytime somebody's telling you technical content, by definition, it's usually in their words. And so there's a non-trivial problem to, 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 to change that into your words and to create a highly valuable document where you can go back at any point and reference these. The reason I like to write it down, you know what happens if I write all this stuff out and I'm three days before the test and I forget something? How hard is it to reference that information? How hard is it to find the exact answer that I want for that problem three days before the test if I have it all written? It's instantaneous, especially if I have an organization system where I spend no more than 10 seconds finding a document. How hard would it be if I didn't write it out? You ever had this where you understood something, four weeks later you go back and you can't even remember what you understood? That system, if you don't write this, if I didn't write that stuff down, that system would kill me. The moment that I spent the extra time, and yes, this is more time consuming, yes. I used to get made fun of. People would be like, why do you spend so much time in this class? Why are you writing all these notes? Why are you doing all this extra stuff? Because it's my education. <laughs> I'm paying thousands of dollars. I could be making, I could make flipping burgers right now making money. But I'm not. I'm like sacrificing all that income to learn this shit. So let me do it right the first time I do it. We should teach this. This should be taught. Not a single person ever taught this stuff 